This one question will shut down every flat earther, no exceptions. Using flat earth geometry, what time will the sun set? Use any location, any day. The globe can tell you. How should we determine the shape of the earth? Well, in a series of lectures by Richard Feynman, he described the key to science. First, we guess it. Then we com well, don't laugh. That's not really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compare to experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. To actually establish the shape of the Earth, it requires computing the consequences based on the hypothesized geometry, including applying the laws of physics. Ignore the laws of physics, and you did not compute the consequences. Then, test these computations by comparing them to observations. If the computations match, then you have evidence that the hypothesis is correct. If they don't match, then the hypothesis is wrong. It's falsified. Flat earthers fail to do this in two ways, getting the globe computations wrong. When you ignore confounding variables, you are strawmanning the globe. And by never providing computations for flat earth. If you're unable to compute the consequences for flat earth, you showed up at the horse race without a horse. You're not able to begin to participate in science. As a contrast to the standard flat earth method, I will use both globe and flat earth to compute the consequences of each hypothesis and compare them to observations. I will use the flat earth and the globe both to predict the sunset time for my location in Minneapolis for February 20 of 2024. For the globe, I used NOAA's SolCalc website to predict the sunset time. No provides a spreadsheet with the formulas for the calculations if anybody wants to verify how the consequences were computed. The math is pretty easy about high school level. And, you know, we all know that if you don't do something for a while, it can get rusty. So if the math seems challenging, that's fine. You could ask others to review it with you or brush up on the math yourself. You'll find it's a bit like riding a bike. You'll quickly get the hang of it. I used Noah's calculator to determine the sunset time for February 20. For Minneapolis, where I live, the globe predicted sunset time is 5.47 p.m. Now, on that day, I was enjoying dinner at Joy's Pattaya in Richfield. It's one of the best Thai restaurants around. You, you must go. At 5.47, I took this photo of the sun setting. Globe prediction confirmed. Now, there are no resources for predicting the sunset time using flat earth. So I computed the consequences myself. To compute the sunset time for flat earth, we need to determine when the sun will cross the horizon. You do this by applying perspective. First, we need the elevation of the sun over flat earth. Some flat earthers give values for the height of the sun. Samuel Rowbottom said less than 4,000 miles. Wilbur Voliva, a flat earth dictator from Zion, Illinois, claimed 3,000 miles. Alexander Gleason is the flat earther that popularized the most commonly cited flat earth map, which is just an azimuthal equidistant projection from the globe. But in his book, he claimed the elevation of the sun to be 1,725 nautical miles or 1,985 miles, about 2,000 miles. Eric Dubay even gives a value. Both the sun and moon figure to be only about 32 miles in diameter and approximately 3,000 miles away. Since there are multiple disagreeing values, I measured it myself on both equinoxes from 45 degrees north latitude, hypothesizing flat earth, and got 3,105 miles. I'll start with this number. Now, if any flat earthers have a different value with a more rigorous method than mine, I'll be glad to use it. 
the uh, a link in the YouTube description where I did the actual math for this and the, some pictures that I took. I'll keep I keep asking, but flat earthers rarely present a method to determine the elevation of the sun over their own flat earth. Uh, why is that? Well, once you have the height, you need to determine the distance from the observer to the subsolar point on flat earth. This would be easy to obtain from a real map. However, Gleason's map doesn't have an actual scale. There are no flat earth maps with scales. But Gleason's map does state 60 nautical miles to the degree, which completely matches reality along lines of longitude. Using this, we can shoehorn latitude and longitude into being a polar coordinate system, then apply the polar distance formula to get the distance between any two points. Again, flat earthers, I am computing the consequences of your claims. If you think this is wrong, provide the right method. I'm simply applying geometry to your claims. The subsolar point of the sun is the position on the earth directly below the sun. This is a well-known position for any moment of the year. At 5.47 p.m. Central Time, the subsolar point was 10.8 degrees south and 173.7 degrees east. That's the ocean north of New Zealand. Applying the polar distance formula, we get a distance of 7,788 miles from Minneapolis. Now we can fill in the distance and apply perspective. 3,105 miles high for the sun and 7,788 miles across the surface. That's a triangle. To apply perspective, we just solve that triangle. Then that gives us the angle of elevation for the sun. The flat earth prediction for the location of the sun as viewed from Minneapolis at 5.47 p.m. on February 20 is 21.7 degrees above the horizon. In reality, the sun was setting at that moment. Observations do not match predictions. Flat earth falsified. At this point, flat earthers will all start crying. They will claim this is a straw man. A straw man fallacy occurs when someone takes another person's argument or point, distorts it or exaggerates it in some kind of extreme way, and then attacks the extreme distortion, as if that is really the claim of the first person is making. This is not what I'm doing. I'm using the map that flat earthers primarily reference, using the declared relationship between the lines of latitude and linear distance from that same map and computing the consequences. That's not a straw man. Flat earthers, I'm simply applying elementary geometry. If you think it's wrong, provide the right method. Do you think it's some sort of optical of effect at play? Provide the empirical evidence for these effects and the method to compute the consequences and I'll be happy to update my method. Catchphrases and word salad are not a substitute for computing the consequences of your claims. Well, it gets worse for Flat Earth. We can apply this test for the general case where the height of the sun and the distance across the surface are unknown. Applying perspective will always result in a positive angular elevation of the sun. The sun can never set on flat earth. If you disagree, provide the method to compute the consequences for flat earth. Lacking that, flat earth is absolutely impossible.